The Sweet 16 is set for the men's NCAA tournament. Two number one seeds have fallen after Purdue was shocked by Fairleigh Dickinson in the first round, and Kansas fell to Arkansas on Saturday. I know, it's crazy. Joining us now <laughs> to help break it all down uh, is CBS Sports <laughs> analyst Chris Walker. So, Chris, uh, I went back and looked at my brackets. I've got four teams still alive. Uh, Bama, yeah. Kansas State. I had Kansas State. Uh, Houston, right, and uh, I can't remember the last one. I, I, I stopped when I saw what happened with Princeton. I was like, oh, forget it, because I already know what I, I. I went back and forth. Were you the one that said you always have to go for an Ivy League? I always went for an Ivy League. Yeah, in my right, other, right, in my right. other pool, I had Princeton like going to the Sweet 16 because. <laughs> I, not knowing anything about uh, men's college basketball or the women's game, I would always just pick the Ivy League team to see what could happen. Like, and so shockingly, the Ivy League team <laughs> is doing really well this yeah, year. Yeah, not the only shocker. <laughs> it sounds like both of you are doing better than I did, and I'm supposed <laughs> to be the expert because my back has been busted from day one. But uh, it's been a great tournament thus far. But you know, I, I mentioned. I mean, I heard you mention talk about Princeton, but really the story is FDU. Beating Purdue in the NCAA tournament is the biggest upset ever in the history of the NCAA, according to the spread. A matter of fact, a little backstory, FDU really was not supposed to be in the tournament. They're, quote, unquote, the 17th seed because they really did not win the championship in their league. Merrimack won it, oh. but because Merrimack was not allowed to play in the tournament, FDU win instead. They're the shortest team in Division One. They're the lowest ranked team in Division One, and they went and pulled off the greatest upset in the history of the NCAA. So that so, was. So, can I ask a question? This is a weird, you know. And I, I think I know you. What am I going to ask? No, no, no. Because because yeah. we're so yeah, yeah. keyed into each other <laughs> after all these years. But but I just sort of wonder: is there an is there should we be assessing? these seeds and these teams differently. Oh, I wasn't going to ask that. No? no. Because, because you know, Chris and Anne-Marie, like, there used to be that old joke when we were kids, right? Like, if you took the worst NFL team, the team that was like, that went, you know, 0-17, and, and you put them against the college national championship and you had the two play, nine out of 10 times, probably 10 out of 10 times, the NFL team is going to beat mm. the best college team, even though they're probably almost around the same age, right? right? And so, but here in college basketball, especially the men's game, where anything goes, it just makes me wonder, it just makes me feel like the seeds are suspect. Well, I'll say you this. Well, football and basketball, completely different sports. And you are certainly right. Every NL team, NFL team will beat Alabama or Georgia every <laughs> single time because they're all professionals. Now, in basketball, anything can happen at any time. And I'll tell you why in the NCAA tournament. Because you're playing against champions. Mm. So you see the screen. So it, like Princeton was the champion of the Ivy League. So, uh, and when you look at these teams, they're very tough to beat early. Florida, uh, uh, Florida Atlantic was the champion of Conference USA. So Tennessee can ill afford to look past them. So Arizona possibly looked past Princeton, was a mistake. Missouri probably looked past Princeton, was a mistake. And now here it is, Missouri, um, uh, Princeton is going to play Creighton, and I give them a chance. Mitch Henderson, he's got a little magic going, and listen, judging by what the Peacocks of St. Peter's did last year, anything is possible. Mm. Well, I, what I was going to ask is, you know, what are the elements of a good sort of Cinderella team? But it sounds like, you know, part of that is also who they're playing against and how they approach them, mm. whether or not they think they are legitimate rivals or right. just like That's a what team you just to play to get about to the next like level. You're going to think, I'm, yes. I'm really gunning for the other seeded yes. team, and instead you should be looking at the game right in front of that, you. You're right. Next thing you know, you're in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I can change these with y'all, both of y'all, because y'all sound like coaches. See? Uh, <laughs> it's the anatomy, you the are. anatomy of the set, it comes down to a fight. Styles make fights. You can have a you know David versus Goliath. But at the end of the day, as one of my colleagues, says who really cheers for Goliath right <laughs> when soon they, the team that's picked to be the lower or the higher seed if they can just stay close to them mm. keep the game tight. the pressure is always on the higher seed so then all of a sudden if you don't shoot the ball well which could happen in college basketball foul trouble which could happen or the, the higher seed just they can be nervous and this just to be their first game. Next thing you know, the crowd starts cheering for FDU. The trial starts cheering from Princeton. And next thing you know, that team has a problem and a couple of shots here and there. I don't know if you guys saw what happened at the end of the Virginia game. The kid, K.A. Clark, 
won a championship as a freshman, great kid, five seconds on the clock. He's tied up in the corner. He just throws a Hail Mary. He should have just held onto the ball. The kid, J.P. Pegues, steals it. He hadn't made a three-pointer in his last 15 attempts, and he hits a buzzer beater to win the game. That is the beauty of the NCAA tournament, the greatest single elimination tournament on the planet. Mm. I tell you, I didn't even see it. But just you're excited Ellie, right now. Chris Ellie, is making it. You're like, you're like... <laughs> That's great. Chris Walker, thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> You're very welcome.